life in the military can be difficult to describe. When people ask me what I do, I still don't have a good answer. Most people have never even heard of what I am. I think every veteran struggles to find a way to explain his or her personal experiences. At least in a way that our friends and families can understand. This is mine. family thank you for joining us uh man you are in uh, episode 13 glow sessions i'm just uh man i'm excited um to have just an individual that i met years ago um we're both born and raised hawaii and um, i don't want to spend too much time trying to uh throw out his credentials because honestly i printed out his credentials and it's like i ain't lying it's like a page law <laughs> so but i'm just honored to have um brother pep tablati he's the president of the marine reconnaissance foundation and um for those of you that know i've been kind of trying to put this out on social media that we're going to have him on and i'm just honored to have him here and um i told pat prior to us going live i don't want to spend you know too much time on things that are not necessary because i really wanted to focus on certain things and um for those that don't know uh when we do these at the end of the day i just want to sit in a room talk story and share stories but also share things that i think are important and brother pep i'm just grateful that you're here and uh, i'm gonna just turn it over to you and i'll have you introduce yourself and we'll just go as you know however however it leads so brother pep you mind introducing yourself how's it greg uh hello everybody my name is pep tablata uh, i'm a local boy from uh, hawaii uh i'm a retired uh marine a force reconnaissance marine um I am currently the president of uh, the Marine Reconnaissance Foundation, which is a nonprofit that uh, specifically supports uh, reconnaissance Marines and sailors and their families. So, uh, you know, Greg and I had the chance to meet uh, years ago at the Paul Mitchell State in Lanikai when uh, Angus Mitchell and his team, including Greg, were so gracious in hosting, uh, you know, gold star families, families, you know, children that lost their daddies, parents that lost their sons, wives that lost their husbands, uh, you know, at the estate for a retreat. Uh, one of one of our, our foundation's recurring program. So uh, Greg, uh, mahalo, really appreciate you allowing me to come on today and ask me to come on. I want to share something with you, Pep. Uh, I, I'm not a super uh, smart person, but Google helps me a lot. I want to share this for those that don't know. Uh, just the United States Marine Corps, I believe, that, and I'm. you can correct me at any time, uh, but I looked up the numbers, and I swear it was 300,000 
but when I looked it up, I think as of last year, what I saw was around 170,000 active right. and then around 30,000. Um, would you consider, are they reserved? Uh, I know it, it is today. It is 172 total, total. active reserve. So by far the smallest service in the military, by far. So I did the math. Okay. So uh, if, so professional athletes, if you're in the NBA or NFL, you're a little bit close to around 1% of the population in the United States. Now, on a global scale, it's different. And that's just a professional athlete. Those guys were literally created, their bodies are just designed, right, to be able to handle those rigorous, like, activity, sports, et cetera. Well, I did the Marine Corps, and that's based on 200,000. They are not even 1%. Like they are, and this is this, the Marine Corps, and we'll go further, but that's 0.06% of the population of the United States. That means they're way less than 1% of the U.S. population. And that is humbling to me, Brother Pep, because I was just thinking, man, in order to just get in, you've got to be, at, just to make it easy in math, you got to be at least 1%, you, or you got to be at that 1% level. And uh, that just humbled me. And, uh, you know, and look at the global scale. It's even crazier because there's 7 billion people on this planet. And what the Marine Corps represents is one thing I will say I learned about Marine Corps just as growing up is that they didn't try to trick you with money or, or college education. And, you know, no incentives. All that. No incentives. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Right. So I'm like, OK, I get it. But um, can you explain to me, because what I just shared is nothing, I, in my opinion, you can correct me, with what reconnaissance and even force recon does, because they're a little bit different. Is that correct? It is correct, yes. Uh, yeah. So, you know, first I will say as a, as a local boy and a proud American, um, you know, what the Marine Corps represents to me is, uh, you know, a cross cut of some of our nation's finest men and women. Um, you know, it's tough and dangerous work every day, regardless in any, in any job, uh, you're, you're held to a very high standard. You're expected to be professional, competent, uh, you know, all the things that we would hope for, for our young men and women from our country. Um, for me personally, growing up in Kailua, right by the, uh, Paul Mitchell state, there was a time when I was in high school and I was living on the beach, uh, and, uh, I could have gone the wrong way. And uh, I knew that I wanted to do something greater, something bigger. And I joined the Marine Corps and saved, saved my life uh, and put me on a path of service to our country. And now through this foundation of service to other people. Um, in the Marine Corps, you know, the United States Marine Corps is considered an elite service. It is by far the smallest. Uh, and inside the Marine Corps, there's a very, very small and select uh, community of Marines and sailors uh, we'll refer to that as the reconnaissance community. We're talking about a couple of hundred out of that 170,000 number. Uh, and, uh, you know, the selection process to get into the reconnaissance community today is, is amazing. What young young Marines and sailors are doing, uh, you know, going over 55 weeks of total training to come out the other end as a basically certified reconnaissance Marine or sailor. Uh, it is amazing. And it's just a further testament to young people today who are willing to volunteer not once, but twice uh, to you know, go through some of the most rigorous selection and assessment uh, in order to come out the other end. And frankly, God forbid our nation is never at war again. But if we are, they will be the men uh, amongst others from other services that will be at the very tip of the spear. You know, um, like you said, God forbid, and we're not going to get political, we don't have to, but I do see some of that already. And I think you posted a few of those things where there's, there's a hidden, you know, there's a hidden danger that a lot of us don't see or we don't talk about, or the media doesn't talk about. And to have you guys in, I mean, not that we're comparing, you know, branches, but if you were to on a scale, I know they're all great. I'm not going to say that one's better than the other, but I was given the understanding that, and it, maybe it's a joke in the Marine Corps, they don't have special forces. It's like, you know what I mean? Like they're just, they're all elite. 
but then like you said i think you said community of of brothers and sisters that's and i i, I like that um but how hard is it in comparison let's say if i'm just a regular corpsman in the marine corps how much more difficult would you say from just being enlisted to where you served and what you did well, I mean, so if we're talking about the Marine Corps specifically, uh, Marine Corps and then our Navy corpsmen who are our medical professionals, uh, you know, the attrition rate uh, to to go from the Marine Corps and whatever military occupational specialty and then join reconnaissance, again, roughly 55 weeks of total training for basic training okay. uh, through output. Um, I would say, you know, it's probably in the, you know, 80 percent uh, failure rate. Now, I want to be clear that all of us are United States Marines first, right? Uh, no MOS is better than any other, but there are those that want to take a higher calling with higher demands that require higher precision, uh, you know, higher levels of intelligence in the application of the job. And reconnaissance is one of those. Uh, and so there's nothing wrong with uh, recon Marines and sailors are being proud of that. Like you've right. come from an elite organization, the United States Marine Corps, or Marines first, but to be able to get into reconnaissance, uh, you know, is frankly a, a very, very big step. Uh, but I would never take away as a combat veteran uh, any other jobs. If you're pumping gas, you're fixing a truck, you're yep. wrenching on an airplane, every single one of those uh, men and women are absolutely critical to what we do. We don't win wars. You know, special operations forces writ large don't win wars. We all work together. So I don't know if that kind of answers your question. No, it does. It definitely does. You know, um, I was watching a video of, and I, I did, I tried to do some research, but like I, one of the videos I saw of you guys training where this guy, uh, they dive down and his hands are tied, I think behind his back. Mm -hmm. diving and, up his, and feet are, down. his feet are bound as well. Yeah. And, it's crazy he's going up and down and he's coming up for a breath of air i think he did three or four times then he has to go out and i think it's a mask he comes back up with the mask in his mouth and has to gasp to get whatever air he can get and go back down i said oh my god this is crazy i, I totally get it like that's a whole nother level like you know to be able to do something like that and i think the idea of them being underwater for so long is, is that now obviously is that something that you did too like a lot of under when you're underwater absolutely uh, i would tell you that uh, in the grand scheme of uh, the military those units that conduct operations in the maritime environment so everyone would know what a navy seal is uh you mm -hmm. know us as reconnaissance marines uh you know the air force and the army also have their what we would refer to as combat and divers or frogmen uh, you know, in our community, everybody uh, today in the pipeline, you come out or, or you're not graduating, uh, you are a frogman. So uh, the, the purpose of that training you described, although it looks crazy, is, is really to instill and demonstrate uh, calmness, control, uh, and the ability in, in very, frankly, arduous circumstances to, to you know, maintain, uh, you know, yourself. Uh, and so in the event when we conduct operations, it's always at night. It's, you know, I've been underwater, under a ship, putting a mine. And you, you want to talk about black of the blackest of the black. And you're under a ship that is, you know, 300 feet long, 500 feet long. Uh, and the engines are running and you can hear all this noise. And you're trying to swim under and put a mine under there. I tell you, you have to be very confident uh, yeah. in not being able to see anything. Uh, wearing a whole bunch of gear in the middle of the night to do whatever task you have. So that kind of training uh, leads to a confidence level that we expect from our teammates. Well, that 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 brother was calm too when I was watching that video. You know, for me, I was stressed watching it, but when I was watching, he was very calm, even though it looked hard. He was still, he wasn't panicking. Bro, to be under a ship in pure, pure bro, I, I'm terrified of of diving at night in Hawaii, even with a dive light. And so I think that's man, that's crazy that that's part of your job. But any other experiences that that you are able to share, like what you just shared in regards to being on the water and doing your job in that fashion? Any other things that stand out? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are there are many, and anyone who is a professional military special operations diver would understand is. 
you know, it looks really, you know, all the things that we do look super cool. In reality, it sucks. You're cold, <laughs> you're tired, you're scared, you're stressed, you have timelines, uh, you know, you have to conduct whatever mission you're doing in the dark of the night. Uh, you know, so I would say in any type of work, whether it's underwater, it's at high altitude parachuting or whatever, uh, it is very high stress and therefore it requires a very high level of professional competence uh, and calmness. Uh, you know, when you're executing an aircraft at 20,000 feet, uh, you know, with night vision goggles at uh, two o'clock in the morning and with, you know, 10 other guys, it ain't, it's no joke. I mean, this is, you know, you're on the, 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 the razor thin possibility of being killed every time you're doing any of this work. Uh, and so it takes a, 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 I would say, a special kind of person. I heard this quote that the absence of fear, it becomes a problem if you try to dismiss it. And so you, you, you mentioned the word scared or fear. I'm, I'm guessing, is that something that you guys... I don't want to just train, but you learn like to manage that fear because fear to me is healthy in a, in a, if it causes you to focus, right? But is that something that you guys train for or is it something that is just in your DNA as an individual as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that if anyone says that in this line of work that they have not been afraid, uh, they would they would be lying. Um, I, I think that being able to to take that fear and anxiety and make it uh, allow it to focus you on the task at hand, uh, you know, is critical. And I'll tell you, it's not just physical fear of death. Failure is actually probably the bigger fear. Mm -hmm. Letting your teammates down, uh, failing your team, not making, uh, you know, you're swimming into a beach from four miles out and, and you're falling behind the rest of your team as they're trying to get to the beach, over the beach to conduct whatever mission they have to do before the sun comes up. Uh, so fear manifests many ways, um, but it really is a, uh, a motivator and a focuser. And, and so that's the way I, I would articulate that, uh, that that any professional in this type of line of work would, would apply the fear, if that makes sense to you. You know, I had the privilege of meeting um, Marcus Luttrell at the estate, uh, him and his wife, uh, Melanie came, uh, I think about some friends. And one of the things I, I never forget, she told me, um, is it was weird that someone would just, cause I, I just met them. And she said, would you please, uh, just don't thank him for his service. Don't thank him for you know what he did for the, for whatever reason, I didn't know at the time. And I understood now for him being the last, you know, the lone survivor of his entire team. And, and then I learned later that he, he still walks through that daily feeling that he should have went with his brothers and, you know, whatever he carried. And so, but one of the things I, I read in the, one of the books about him was that fear, part of that healthy fear is what kind of kept him alive, right? Where he was. Um, and and I, I don't, I don't know if the most of us can handle um that rigorous uh regimen like for you right now what is your daily life like now knowing what you know what you've been through the intensity do you still have a lot of the intensity did you have to dial that down now that you're not doing that like what you used to no that's that's a fair question uh you know first what my life is now is is myself my my wife my children my family sleep peacefully at night because there are mm. others who have come uh, after me, uh, after Marcus, uh, who continue to hold the line, right? Uh, and and we're, we should all be fortunate for that because there are dangers to our nation, our way of life every day. Uh, as far as how it affects me, it, 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 it frankly was difficult, you know, to go from a lifestyle that is very you know, high adrenaline, high excitement, uh, working with people that are of the utmost professional competence. You know, when, when I joined the Marine Corps, I was, you know, the AGA stud. You get around these kind of guys, psh, they're mediocre. <laughs> uh, keep up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's humbling. And so to go from that type of lifestyle and then uh, for myself retiring 
and then going to a normal, you know, a normal lifestyle was hard. It was difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, and so, you know, for me, part of uh, our work in the foundation is very cathartic because what I get to be is around my teammates, whether mm -hmm. I serve directly with them or not. Um, and I get to be around the type of uh, professional competence. I, I would say some of the guys I've, I've worked with, giants, legends, yeah. and most Americans don't even know who they are. And that's the way that we like it. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it was a hard transition. I mean, you, you know, you go from your day tomorrow would be, hey, you guys, we're going to go up to 20,000 feet. We're going to do, you know, a bunch of parachute jumps. And then you've got off for the day. We'll see in a couple of days, come back. We're going to do, you know, this other thing. We're going to do that, you know, treat it as, as professionals uh, and, and uh, you know, app applying that when we had to, in my experience in combat in Iraq, uh, you know, and then coming to a normal setting. However, um, I try to fo me personally focus that into what I do uh, in the nonprofit world with my wife and our team. And you guys are definitely doing some crazy, amazing things. I, I've been going through you guys' uh, foundation website every day. And one of the things, I'll share this. Um, I had a story I wanted to share with you, but I think I'll put that story. We'll shelve it for another time. But when I went through you guys' website and there was, um, uh, Han, can you pull up there on the website? I'll have her pull up the website. There's a section on there. Bro, I ain't going to lie. Like, I don't have no problems being transparent when I do these lives. But, bro, when I went through the fall, I think it's the fallen tab. I was like, oh. And, and so when I started to read the names out loud, like verbalize it, it just blew me away. Right there, fallen warriors. And I told my wife the other day, it's like, bro, this is crazy. Like, just looking at all these brothers of yours uh, that, you know, I when you read their names out loud, and I guess for me it's honoring when I read their name out loud. It's like, you know, my mom passed away many years ago, and I still don't say her name, but I think if I were to look at her picture, read her name, and honor her, I would have a hard time too. But looking at some of these men, uh, so young, a lot of them are young, and and what they did, so powerful bro what you guys are doing and like you know like i said i couldn't get i think i read 10 names and i just started like not, not uncontrollably but i was weeping you know i was like bro this is crazy how impactful and for people that don't know if you go to the website uh we have it up on the screen um but just it's so powerful what you guys are doing with the uh, marine reconnaissance foundation i guess we'll shift gears if you're okay with that can you walk us through maybe how you started or how this all came about with the Marine Reconnaissance Foundation? Sure. So uh, I was uh, invited by uh, a very respected teammate uh, by the name of Lieutenant Colonel Byron Owen, uh, you know, American warrior and leader of Marines in combat. Uh, he said, hey, would you mind, you know, uh, joining the foundation? And, and I want to say probably 2017, maybe. I didn't really know much about it. Uh, and I said, hey, listen, I, I'm willing to get involved, but if I'm going to get involved, that means my wife, the team, is going to get involved, and we're going to mm. do things, right? We're going to make an impact. We're going to come to the foundation. We're going to say, we want to do these programs. We want to do these things. And if if that's not acceptable to at that time, the current board, then not interested. Uh, since that time, uh, you know, we have uh, been able to completely transform the foundation uh, where we have, uh, you know, a, a new mission statement, lines of effort, and then programs under those lines of effort. So the one that you're familiar with is uh, the Gold Star Family Retreat, right? So, you know, we, we uh, choose, uh, you know, five to 10 new families each year. You saw that list. There are others. Uh, we invite them out uh, for this retreat. Uh, we'll start in California, we'll end in Hawaii, um, but it's not so much about the retreat, right? So the retreat is a beautiful expression of love and respect, but, you know, think about a family who, uh, their daddy was killed 15 years ago, or their son, who, you know, in the first year after his death, people were there. In the second year, that kind of doing a little bit, in the out years, they weren't. Now, why? 
because we were a nation at war. We were in Iraq, we were in Afghanistan, we were, you know, we were combating terrorism and other people were dying. Other people were getting injured. And so it was not that they were forgotten. It was that, that a lot of other stuff is happening. So, you know, I, I take the personal responsibility in the case of our gold star program. And we have other programs of calling those families and contacting them. And, you know, the first year, the year that I met you, uh, was the first year we did it. I want to say it was 2018, I think. Um, you know, families receiving these calls out of the blue, they didn't necessarily know me, even if I served with their son or their dad or not. And there was everything from complete elation to anger, right? Because, hey, you're call is this a scam? Like you're calling me and you want to bring our family, you know, you know, two states across two weeks to do these things. So in the beginning, it was it was uh, it was very delicate to get the program off. Uh, but when the first set of families went through and they were like, wow. We realized that there are people that think of us and that remember our son or dad or husband or brother. And so the, the, the program, this specific one just just blew up because the other families started to realize, wow, people have not forgotten us. And that's really the key point. It's not the retreat. right? It's beautiful. It is wonderful. But what is more important is to demonstrate to the families that we have not forgotten your your son or your father, or your husband, our team have not forgotten. We will never forget. And we haven't forgotten about you. And so what we've done since that time, we just executed our fifth uh, retreat uh, at the, at Angus's house, the Paul Mitchell State. Um, we now have, you know, 70, uh, you know, family members across probably 30 different families that we've connected them and they become a microcosm of their own community and it's amazing because they didn't know each other before uh, and even other years they've become connected and now those families go on vacations together they visit each other because they have that terrible commonality but they have someone that they can spend time with and talk to who understands where they come from i can't i haven't lost a son but these families, we've created this community who can. And so that, that's, a, that's an example of that's where I met you. Uh, and that's kind of how we started our programs for the Gold Star Families, which has developed uh, and frankly blown up today. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to understand uh, <laughs> the heaviness of it. But last year, um, you know, I traveled, I think, six months out of the year that I wasn't home. And one of the struggles I had was um, not being there for my wife and my kids, not being able to be the provider. Well, I was provided, but not protecting the home physically. Yeah. And so there were cases where I would call my dad and said, dad, can you just, you know, check up on them, make sure, you know, just go in the house. Because my dad lives outside. He has another, um, he has like a camper RV that he lives. But, and that meant a lot to me, you know, that my dad would go in and, and I would text a few of my buddies and say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to be home. Can you just drive by when I'm not there? And I got cameras and all that. What happened when I was at the Palm uh, Interstate and I saw, and I remember a few of those families and I heard the stories and I said, wow, how crazy is that? That one of the greatest services is to care for a man's family after he's gone. Because that, if that's not heavy for any father or husband, uh, that's crazy. But that's one of the, to me, one of the greatest are, is to to care for someone else's family after you've gone. I, I would tell you that if, if it was me and I had lost my life serving our nation, knowing that my teammates and my brothers will look after my family, not just one time, but always. Uh, you know, is, is, uh, is, a, is a level of comfort that, uh, you know, we, we talk about brotherhood and we talk about teammate, right? Those are not slogans. It is a way, right? It is a way that you conduct yourself and it is expected. So, uh, you know, we in the Reconnaissance Foundation, you know, uh, we have an internal saying, action, not words. Like, let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Let's do it consistently, not one time. And then, whew, you know, my job here is done. You know, let, let's be, uh, you know, that force that sets the standard and the expectation that all of our teammates should expect and should follow. So that's kind of our approach to this. So I, I did see that 
in the LOE. Um, I'm learning acronyms, <laughs> so lines of effort. Yeah. Oh, bro, it's crazy. It's stages, right? Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the LOEs are based upon severity or need, and then as time progresses, yep. one of the biggest things, uh, what I saw was financial. That is one of the, you know, it's not about money, but bro, sometimes it is if you yep. cannot pay a mortgage or rent, whatever. And uh, Han, can you pull up that? I want my wife to pull it up so people can see. So it's on the about, I think the about us, and maybe you can walk us through that. But sure. Um, I think the service under services, yeah. Have my wife pull it up. So that can you explain the the line or LOEs or line of effort? Sure. Uh, so uh, you know, I talked about our mission statement, which is you know supporting reconnaissance Marines and sailors past and present. Period. Our lines of effort are broken up into three, uh, and uh, although they're not lined out that way exactly here, I, I will verbally describe them, right? So okay. um, line of effort one is our deliberate reoccurring uh, program set. So I, I talked about the, the Gold Star Family Retreat. Uh, you know, we also have a similar retreat for the kids, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, the Gold Star Children, you know, we've had summer camps where we send the kids and our representatives and, you know, they do a, you know, a 10 day summer, summer camp, you know, riding horses, archery, art and crafts, mm -hmm. hiking, et cetera. So that's another example. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, you know, we uh, we have a, a wounded uh, teammate retreat. In fact, we're leaving a week from today to Florida. And uh, for this retreat uh, is another example of LOE one. Our uh, Marines and sailors who have been traumatically wounded uh, or injured. So think of someone who is paralyzed, or someone who is missing limbs, someone who has severe blast injuries, maybe uh, traumatic brain injury, uh, all with post-traumatic stress, where we, uh, we provide a retreat each year uh, for the Marine and sailor, but more as importantly, their family. This is a family event. We want families to come together because this is a time for healing and for brotherhood because a lot of the guys that are injured i'll be honest uh you know it's hard to see who you were and now you're missing your arms and your legs and it's mm. hard to to understand who physically you are now and so you know we uh, try to provide these retreats to provide a family uh, environment a safe family environment bring other teammates together and uh to give them a sense of purpose we put them to work like, hey, you're, you're driving this vehicle, you're responsible for logistics because they want to have, uh, you know, uh, a sense of, hey, I am uh, responsible for these things. And so, uh, you know, that, that's a second example of line of effort, um, number one. And I have many other programs, small business grants. Uh, we help uh, Marines, uh, you know, who submit packages to get into advanced ed education, MIT, uh, you know, a mentor program. Oh, MIT. Uh, yeah, so so that's LOE one, and I could give you hundreds of examples, but the point is, is they are reoccurring programs that we consistently do. Uh, you know, LOE number two would be more of the emergency crisis support, uh, where um, you're not going to see a lot of that in in uh, open press because it's family business. You know, imagine. Uh, there's a suicide. Imagine, uh, you know, some of our Marine, many of our Marines and sailors, uh, you know, they've all been through a lot over the past 20 years of, of, of combat and they're damaged mentally, spiritually, physically, psychologically. And so, you know, we do have cases of, of some teammates that really need acute help. You know, maybe they're drinking alcohol, maybe they're substance abuse, maybe they're, they're, they're homeless, jobless, Although not common, it does happen. And so, you know, we discreetly uh, work uh, to support those families. Uh, an example could be uh, the suicide of a teammate. We would immediately be in contact with the family. We would help them in the, the process, including offering uh, uh, grieving services, counseling. Uh, we would help them organize a, maybe a, a celebration of life. And then if there are children left behind, uh, in fact, yesterday we actually did this for real, and I won't mention any names, we actually established uh, investment accounts for our, our teammates, two little girls, 
So when those little girls become young ladies and they're they're going to you know put a down payment on a house or something, there will be something there that honors their father that will be available to them. So that's an example of emergency support. I, I could give you others, you know, a home burns down, uh, a complete loss of everything, you know, and uh, support uh, in fundraising to help mitigate that type of thing. Uh, we've even gotten uh, right here in this location, have gotten phone calls at two o'clock in the morning. My husband left the house. He has the guns. Uh, he's not right. And, you know, we will find where he is in this specific case, Montana, by pinging his phone. We'll call teammates who are in the area. I need <laughs> you to get to this location and get control of this person. And then we would coordinate to get that person into, uh, you know, uh, counseling uh, and, uh, and alcohol cessation, et cetera. So I could go on on the emergency support, but those are examples that, you know, most people won't see because that's yeah. private family business. Um, but I would say that, uh, you know, uh, I, my wife and I and our team who are all not compensated working for this organization, we have saved lives. I can tell you that with, without blinking an eye, we have saved families. I believe uh, it. We have helped teammates in the most meaningful way. So as a nonprofit, you know, if, if we choose to support, uh, you know, in this case, the reconnaissance community, it can't just be the stellar, wonderful poster boy, right? We have teammates that need help, acute help. Um, and so we try to do all of that, right? Uh, and so that's an, those are examples of line of effort number two. Line of effort number three is our historic preservation line. I am very proud of it because you, you can't understand who you are if you don't understand where you come from. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny because growing up in the, in the force recon community, it's beat into you. You don't talk about recon. You don't self promote, you know, we're not in movies. We don't have calendars. We don't have Nike <laughs> shoes. You know, that's just not <laughs> our way. And that's okay. If other organizations do, that's just not our way. So, uh, what is important, though, uh, in a, you know, recon Marine reconnaissance history is amazing, uh, and it goes back to the uh, late 30s, early 40s, and uh, you know, it's American history. It is Marine Corps history. Uh, it, I mean, I could I could tell you some stories about things that uh, you know, Marines from all and sailors are from all walks of life in the recon community have done in service to our nation, and you would be astonished. I'm astonished, and so we do a lot of research. Uh, trying to tr trying to pull those uh, you know significant figures or missions or teams uh, and try to share that history and lineage with the American public, you know our followers on you know, social media, but more importantly with the the aspiring young recon Marines and sailors that are going through the selection and and pipeline today. So an example of that is we our mentor program we bring significant figures. Uh, you know, legends in the special operations world that most Americans probably don't even know who they are. You have men like Major Jim Capers, uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Digger O'Dell, uh, you know, uh, Living Medal of Honor winner Earl Plumley, who is an active duty Green Beret today. And we try to take them and try to put them down at our schoolhouse or at our units. Uh, you know, uh, Sergeant uh, Robert Buddha, legendary force recon uh, team leader in Vietnam. I could go on and on. And we coordinate these efforts where these legends from our community go and interact directly with the young Marines and sailors in training to, you know, give them lessons learned. People were killed. This is what we learned. These are successful things we did. And so, you know, capturing the lineage, preserving the history, and then providing mentorship uh, is extremely important to us. So those are kind of our, our three lines of effort in a nutshell. There are two things you covered. Uh, one was uh, the suicide or mental health. Um, that's something near and dear to my heart just because of uh, just things in my family. And uh, as a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, a clinical psychologist that we did a podcast together. And she uh, she's from, she's born and raised Kailua. Um, and she lives in Vegas now, so she operates her practice in Vegas and Hawaii. So she goes back and forth. Um, and I did tell her, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you today. So if, if you guys do need resources, I'll definitely send her her information. Um, and then, um, if, you know, if anybody needs 
any type of counseling she, she has that but the other thing that you had um mentioned uh, about the whole mentorship program that that's something that i think in in our generation today kids today identity is such an issue like a lot of people don't know where they come from or who they are and i think that's powerful like identity is such a powerful thing if we don't know who we are like we don't know where we're gonna go we don't we don't have a roadmap for our life it seems like right and uh and I, one, one last comment i'll turn it back over to you said uh you guys are not the uh, popular ones you don't have the nike shoe deals but you do have the Scott Slipper deal, you know. So, <laughs> well, that's Hawaiian we'll style. That's yeah, Hawaiian. yeah, yeah. Can, uh, Pep, can we show the pictures of Angus's place, and then maybe sure. just kind of if, if you're comfortable with that and Angus's, yeah, I can describe them if you want. Yeah. Uh, so, we're, well, that's the logo I found on your website. What about this picture? Yeah, so this is our inaugural uh, Gold Star Retreat. This is at uh, Angus Mitchell's home in Lanikai, the, the infamous fault, Paul Mitchell State. And what you see here is six Gold Star families uh, that we brought out, uh, you know, on our first program. I want to say it was 2018, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is them arriving at first day at the estate, uh, you know, for our Gold Star Family Retreat. Uh, incredible bunch of human beings uh, I consider we consider them all family today uh you know you see sons you see widows you see moms and dads who lost their uh, you know their loved one in service to our nation and so a very special group of people we've been able to do this program uh now five times and we have had approximately 70 to 80 total family members come through from about 25 to 30 uh, total families or fallen teammates. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we're here in Hawaii, we try to, uh, you know, provide opportunities for American history. This is on the USS uh, Missouri, the battleship in Pearl Harbor. Uh, and you'll see some senior leaders come out and support in the middle. If you see the gentleman in the uniform, mm -hmm. uh, that is a, now today uh, a major general in the Marine Corps. He was a general at the time. Uh, and he was adamant, I'm going to come out and I am going <laughs> to escort these families uh, personally. Just amazing, right? Because these yeah. leaders understand what these families have been through. In this case, that's uh, uh, General G-Man, uh, soft G, good personal friend of mine, uh, representing the United States Marine Corps. So so uh, humbling, man, to see him in, in the middle of all that. Uh, this is at uh, Angus's estate, and uh, we always, you know, we as local people have a lot of friends and family, and so when our friends and family hear about what we're doing, people are like, hey, can I come and play music? Hey, can can we come and show them how to uh, paddle canoe? And so, right, Hawaiian style. It's yep. local people going, wow, right, like you, right, like Angus, you know, people yep. from Hawaii saying, hey, how can we help? Like James Tanaka, who I know he doesn't like me saying his name, but he is <laughs> He is uh, one of the most uh, important figures in all of this, uh, coming together to help others. I, I got to just drop a little story on this property. So for those that don't know, this is where I worked. Uh, a very good part of my life. Met a lot of amazing, you know, influential people, uh, presidential figures, um, you know, movie stars, people that have money. But I will say when Pat brought his team and these families to me like these guys are the legit vips and there's something so healing about not just the house or the property but in that location my mom uh she passed away of cancer in 2014 but her last actually her first kailua sunrise and her last sunrise was at this property was at this house right in the background and so there's a lot of uh, healing that happens on this property. And I think, you know, with the Gold Star families, there's no exception. Okay, what is this one? So uh, that is uh, what we call the jack or jack of all trades. That is the, uh, the insignia that represents the Marine Reconnaissance community. Uh, if you look on the top, there's a, a torch that means leading the way, uh, you know, finding the path. You'll see the parachute wings, uh, and that, that denotes advanced parachute capabilities. 
and then you will see the diver in the middle uh you know so if you think of kind of a you know sea land and air sort of uh you know connotation and this logo goes back to the 1950s so uh that is uh that is the uh you know the insignia the recon jack uh that is associated with the reconnaissance community it is mounted on a paddle the paddle is the highest expression of respect uh you know you you only receive a paddle if you have earned it uh and they are handcrafted hand stained wrapped uh and then you know or some type of art put on it and that's obviously you can see the mopulu behind that's the uh, you know that is at the polymers thing sorry brother you're on you're on mute i think so so the paddle is uh specifically for reconnaissance or uh marine corps as a whole yeah so the tradition started in reconnaissance uh and other organizations have kind of adopted it it's kind of a cool one right if you have a paddle right a person with a paddle by him or herself can't move a large boat but if the team each has a paddle mm -hmm. and we move in unison right then you move together as a team so that's kind of the the you know the, the connotation here okay I like it, and you kind of beat the mokes in the background. That's no doubt, epic. All right, who's this guy? And her... so, so this is uh, Miss Diane Hom and uh, and her husband, okay. uh, her son Caleb Medley, uh, very respected teammate from our community, uh, was killed uh, in a high altitude parachute accident, uh, and so uh, you know this is one of our revered families. Uh, Diane is actually a member of our board. She is our gold star representative. So whenever there's a death, uh, is it suicide, training, or combat, uh, D Diane, because of her personal experience, is prepared to interact with the families immediately, uh, you know, to kind of talk them through the grieving process. But this is her in the beginning when she attended uh, our gold star retreat uh, in 2018. And... and uh from this picture do you know when how long her son had passed uh, in relation to this photo was it years or recent uh it had probably been six years okay I, i'm just asking because they look very happy in that photo you know well she with the, the loss of her son she gained a whole family and a whole bunch of sons including yeah. my son that spot where uh where they're sitting Bro, I used to catch fish on my lunch break right there, right on that spot. You know, and, and this whole location, I know it's, we're, we're not promoting just a, a property, but this this whole area of Kailua is, is so healing. You know, it really is. Okay, this one, this is what I wanted you to explain. What What is this one? Explain this one for us. Please. So uh, when we have the families here in Hawaii, we uh, are friends at the... Gunstock Ranch in the North Shore have a, uh, we have teamed with them for their reforestation program where they, uh, they have native species plants that they, they replant and grow to get, uh, you know, native Hawaiian, uh, you know, species of, uh, in this case, large trees. So we team up with them, we bring the families out there and we allow them the opportunity to to plant a native Hawaiian tree. And in doing so, they are placing their roots, their mana into a our, our ground here in Hawaii for, for a connection forever. Uh, and uh, each year when we go back with the next set of families, we try to go and visit the trees. And, you know, it starts out like that and it's gonna end up being a 60 foot tree. And we always try to share, uh, you know, the, um, the photos of the trees as they grow strong. On the back of my car, I have a sticker. Uh, it says "Roots." <laughs> That's it. So, so That's powerful. It. Gotta have the roots. And uh, man, I could stare this photo all day. It, it's so powerful. And then she's holding. Uh, I think we call it ipo, yeah, in Hawaiian. I think what yeah. we call that. Yeah. So powerful. Um, in terms of your guys' uh, foundation. Han, can you pull up their um, donation page? I just, uh, 
how how can so we I, you mentioned earlier about these two girls i think their father passed away and you guys set up something for them uh financially so that, that's so, actually happening today oh. in real time wow that's crazy so when people if they want to sew into your guys foundation I'm guessing it's it's a blanket. If I if we give, it just goes to immediate need. I'm guessing first, but yeah. So I want to put up this page. So people, if you guys want to give, they have obviously you can do your own amount. You can do, I believe, monthly, one time. Uh, they have tons of ways: wire transfer, mail. I mean, if you're old school, you can do the postal service, PayPal, all that stuff. Um, man, this is crazy. I. I the fact that you guys it's not just about the fallen warriors but it's their families that's it's pretty intense um uh, i ain't gonna lie pep like i'm such a sucker emotionally when it comes to, i know you you're you're pretty well composed i'm sure you've done a lot of these but this is so emotionally heavy for me to just even talk to you about this stuff because it, it really hits heavy the other thing i like about this is uh, i did go through the recon uh, businesses as well and i'll have my wife click on that and if you if you know or you don't know you can walk us through those individuals as well we definitely want to put them out there too so how if you click on the recon businesses i'll have pep kind of walk us through those individuals sure. i thought this is pretty cool honestly. yeah so we we try to promote uh vetted marine reconnaissance businesses um uh, you know, as people transition out of service and they, you know, they go on with their life or even some young Marines or sailors that remain, uh, we try to promote them. And in fact, we have a business grant program where we will infuse funds or we'll infuse manpower uh, to help them get off the ground or to amplify their business. And we will even, uh, you know, make, provide that grant, allow them to donate goods, whatever their good is to us we'll write that off tax wise and then we'll send all of those goods out to the active duty force so what happens is their business is amplified they have received funds to uh, help uh, bolster their uh, financial position uh, they have gotten a tax write-off by donating their goods and then we give those goods to the active duty recon marines and sailors so it's a pretty pretty cool program pretty, pretty proud of it so uh greg i, I apologize uh, i uh, I have a little bit of a limiter because we have a, a, a command map uh, program with yep. our family today, but I would be absolutely honored to continue this conversation as a part two, if it's something that you would like to do. And I would do it as soon as tomorrow. I apologize. I didn't realize that we would, uh, we would uh, run out of time that quick. No, that's perfectly fine. Um, I think uh, once again, just thank you. And I'll take whatever time we get from you because uh, I, I see the value in what you guys are doing and I'm grateful. Um, thank you for your time. And uh, I'm going to play an outro video and then we can uh, head it out, uh, head out that way. And uh, family, if you guys want to bless them. Um, we'll post it up in all of our social media. And um, there's a lot of stories I know that we can share and all that, but fam, I just want you guys to know that um, this is something that's very important, uh, vital. And, uh, that sounding corny I, I am grateful Pat, for for what you've done and, and your brothers and your family um because of what you guys do and i hate trying to sound cliche but like we can actually sleep in a peaceful bed at night not have to worry about shelter or food or being at war well at least for this time being right but i'm grateful and i just want to say thank you for that yeah i really we, do we we are you. grateful as well so thank you very much Guys, I'm going to play um, the video that I played in the beginning, and then uh, that'll be the last of us talking. But, Pep, once again, thank you. We appreciate you, brother, you and your family, and you know, Charity and your two kids. They're, they're all part of the team. You may be the head coach or maybe you're the starting starting five, whatever, but I'm just grateful for you and your entire family. So, guys, until next time, thank you for joining us. Once again, we'll post up all the links on how you can be a part of support the Marine Reconnaissance Foundation. Uh, on behalf of myself and my, my family, we thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Aloha. Uh
Life in the military can be difficult to describe. When people ask me what I do, I still don't have a good answer. Most people have never even heard of what I am. I think every veteran struggles to find a way to explain his or her personal experiences. At least in a way that our friends and families can understand. This is mine. Marine.